Today, December 9, it is the optional memorial of Saint Juan Diego. Good things happen to those who go to daily Mass. A very good thing happened to today's saint on his long trek to daily Mass, something so extraordinary that it permanently altered a continent. Juan Diego was born near present-day Mexico City in the pre-Columbian Aztec Empire, though he belonged to the Chichimec, not the Aztec people. At the age of 50, Juan received a baptism from a Franciscan priest about five years after those path-breaking missionaries had first walked barefoot from coastal Veracruz into the Aztec heartland. Juan must have quickly fell in love with his newfound faith because he visited God as one visits a sturdy friend more than just once a week. On Saturday, December 9, 1531, Juan was walking to Mass and crossed over a small hill called Tepeyac. A mysterious woman appeared to him speaking Nahotal, the local language. The woman quickly identified herself as the ever-Virgin Holy Mary, Mother of the True God, and asked Juan to approach the bishop to petition that a shrine be built in her honor on that very hill. So the humble Juan went and knocked on the door of one of the most powerful men in the new Spanish dominion. The bishop was solicitous but cautious and requested a sign to buttress Juan's credibility and his request. A series of events then transpired which culminated on Tuesday, December 12. On that day, Juan presented the bishop with flowers carefully cradled in his poncho, which Mary had directed him to collect. When Juan unfurled his poncho in the bishop's presence, everyone saw then what everyone sees now in the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico City. The young, pregnant Mary of the Peac emblazoned in full color on Juan's coarse poncho. An early document holds that after 1531, Juan Diego, whose wife had died by then, spent the rest of his days living the life of a hermit near the chapel on Tepeyac, housing the miraculous image. Juan likely welcomed the first waves of pilgrims who visited the primitive shrine to pay homage to Our Lady of Guadalupe. It is difficult to imagine anyone returning to his or her everyday existence after seeing, hearing, and conversing with God, Mary or a saint. Some experiences are before and after events. Their profundity divides life into halves or portions. A divorce, a dreadful medical diagnosis, a financial collapse, a child's death, a crippling accident, or, on the positive side, and much more rarely, a divine locution, an apparition, or an unmistakable spiritual intervention, all divert the straight line of a life's graph. The days between December 9 and the vigil of December 12 are a kind of Mexican treaty womb, when that nation celebrate founding events which have nothing to do with the legal documents. Nation building requires more than just a constitution of a winning of a key battle. Building an enduring people requires a shared language, a common history, and undivided religious outlook, and a unity of cultural expression. If there is a source of Mexican unity, it is found in the vision of the humble servant Saint Juan Diego. Millions of pilgrims endlessly process day after day, year after year, 
century after century, before the miraculous image of the most visited Marian shrine in the world. These citizens don't go to Mexico's national archives to search for words on a faded parchment, but to a shrine to gaze in wonder at a young woman imprinted vividly on rough cactus fibers. The faithful arrive on pilgrimage, often on foot, to bow their heads, to light a candle, and to pray before the permanent miracle that is a simple Indian's gift to the church. They come to visit the person, not an idea, because the person can absorb our love and love us back. Let us pray. Saint Juan Diego, we ask your humble intercession in heaven to assist all those who doubt the power of God and his saints. May your example of fidelity and service inspire us to holiness as much as your miraculous tilma. Amen. <music>